So I, I expected to change the slide um, during the, the talks. So like every speaker does. So it's the talk I've made at API Strategy in last month. So there's still the logo. I, I didn't have time to change it, but yeah, improvisation. So, so yeah, the idea is about um, how we can containerize APIs uh, for uh, to improve developer experience. So um, uh, I will talk mainly about uh, developer experience. So, so this is me. I'm organizer of uh, co-organizer of this conference, but I'm also the COO of Webshell.io which is a, uh, an API middleware integration, so JavaScript interface for integrating many API and script them. And we just launched OAuth.io, so one API for integrating in the same way in three lines of JavaScript, any OAuth that you can know. Really, we have 100 OAuth, but whatever the spec. So, so because we are a middleware of API integration, we've seen many, many, many APIs. Um, so, and we made, we've seen lot, so many designs, so we decided to, to, to give a feedback from all the mistakes we've made from one year and a half. So, so this presentation is a mashup, mashup from my experience and my readings. So the, you can see my readings, uh, try to be uh, intelligent, but it's hard. So um, yes, I tried to make a comparison with uh, developer experience with the containerization of the, the shipping industry because the shipping industry has been possible because of, uh, we can say, a user and a network user experience. So and you will see why. So this is, um, this is a, a, a picture of the 20th century supply chain. The, the main thing is that you have to, um, you think integration uh, completely vertically. And at this time, for example, like Ford, every craft is inside the company. So everything is completely internally. But, but if you think 21st century supply chain, everything is completely decentralized. So, uh, and this is, in my opinion, the, the, the API market. So, so um, and it, it, it makes a lot of change. And who could have, uh, who could we have seen all this change possible? to make a com an industry completely globalized. And, and we will see how it, we can make it for APIs. So my talk is from industry supply chain management to data and web service supply chain management. So I try to make a metaphor on it. So this is, this is Skype, yeah. Uh, this is a Phoenician's boat. So 3,000 3, years before Christ, before, uh, and, uh, and you know, you, so it's a painting, no photo at this time. But uh, you see that people are loading the boat with hands only. Just they have bags and just loading the boat. So it's, it's, the, it's no technology inside it. But what is, what is funny is that in 3,000 years of shipping, and maybe, no, 5,000, so 3,000 plus 2,000, in 1913, we're still in the same way. So we have boats and we're still loading, okay, with some ropes, some machines, but it's still humans who are loading it. And the most advanced technology that we have is a cargo hook on, uh, on the right. So <laughs> it's completely not technological, uh, but, uh, but this is uh, where 5,000 years of shipping industry has evolved. So industry doesn't evolve so fast until you have uh, people who, are, who make changes. And these people is this guy, it's not a real photo, but he's on a track and it's really important for the next part of the story. This guy is Malcolm McLean, uh, who has invented the container, but we will, we will we'll see it after. So this is how we ship, how we load and unload uh, boats at this time. So here is for military, uh, but uh, still humans uh, carrying um, uh, boxes and, and bags. So it's completely not scalable. So, and many other, uh, so a lot of people try to standardize it to, to like boxes, big boxes, to, uh, to load and unload better. So from 96, in, uh, uh, in 1926 to 1929, uh, a, a first uh, train line tried to make it, but it was a big fail. They were costing, they had too much time, uh, money spent uh, by using box that gather all the uh, bags than, uh, than the, the, the old classical way, so they, they stopped it. Chicago Great Western Railway made the same. It was a, a bigger fail, so I think they even had bankruptcy out of it, so, uh, so it was a, a big fail. So a lot of people have good ideas, try to standardize, but they fail and, and they, they just uh, make the bug in the ecosystem. So in 1934, Michael McLean, Michael McLean 
is a, a, a is a, in city, and he just see that um, to make a trip, so people are really um, to pay him just to to have a, a truck and to go from a city to another. So he decided to say, hmm, great, and he asked how much money, five dollars, but at this time it was a lot of money. So he said, okay, and decided to, to create a whole company about it. But he's a famous entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur, so he has many ideas uh, in his head. And one important thing for the shipping industry is that we had the Second World War, so, and war make, needs you to have uh, a, a supply chain management completely under stress, and it will change a lot of things. And so we had these ships, so big cargoes, and some, are, uh, some of them are called liberty ships. So uh, give me liberty or give me death. So, and uh, Roosevelt said we will make more ships than the Germans uh, could, uh, could pull into the water. So, but, so the tankers come bigger and bigger and bigger. We are not anymore in the Phoenician style, uh, where boats were really small. So boats were really small. So in the 50s, this is a kind of classic supply chain. So a, a good is made in the industry, then it goes by train or by truck to, a, to a, a dock where the boat is, and you have to load and unload, unload the boat, and it's the same on the other way. And what is the main pain point, you know, is that shipping costs, the biggest shipping costs are just on the loading and unloading the boat. It doesn't cost so much money, to go from the industry to the truck and the truck to the, to, the, uh, to the dock. But really, because the boats are really big, really, really big, it's 10,000 tons of, of goods inside, uh, longshoremen with their cargo hook can take, make only five days just to load and five days to unload a boat. So, and Marco McLean was one of this truck driver and he was waiting 24 hours, 88 hours in a dock just to have his truck loaded. So he said, something is wrong. Something is wrong in it. So he decided to build another, yet another container uh, to, to, to solve it. Just a few numbers, but the main one is 55% of the cost of the pork cost is due when the ship is at, is at dock. This is why at this time we have no international, international, well, internationalization of the, um, we, we don't sell goods overseas because it costs too much money. So no, um, no barrier protection, no board office protection. It's just the market, it's, it's, it's cost too much money. So uh, in, the, in this book, the, the box, Mark Levinson say that, yeah, this is as sexy as a tin can. So it's completely not sexy, but he has made a, a real revolution. Into, into the shipping industry. And Michael McLean invented it. Invented it. Um, but w at one time, uh, in 1955, he has the main truck industry in all the East uh, uh, America. But he said that uh, he thinks that the real bottleneck is in the dock, in the boats. So he decided to, uh, to sell his truck industry, $180 million at this time. So it's huge money, it's maybe billions today and to create a, a shipping industry, but with boats. Just to tell you that at this time, you're not allowed to have a truck industry and a boat industry. So he had to choose, but he decided to invest all his money on it. So, and because of the container, so he decided to make it itself. He said that, oh, I've built a container, use it, it's the standard. No, he said, and what's the most important, he said, I think it's the standard, but I will invest all my money and my energy to do it. So just a few numbers per ton shipped. So on the left, classical, before Malcolm McLean container, and after. So this is approximately the price of per ton shipped industry. So this is why today we, we use containers everywhere, and 95% of the shipping industry is about containers. So when you find a good container, you are able to revolutionize sorry, an industry. So, and this is my point, and my thinking now is, Working on Webshell for one year and a half and all Thio since uh, maybe eight months, um, we say that we may have a clue to think how, contain how containers could, could solve it, but for APIs. So what is the relation? Because it's, we're not in a, a, a containers days, you know, or shipping industry days, or API days. So um, how can shipping uh, in goods can be related to shipping data in service? So this is a, a slide inspired from Sam Raji, or Sam Ramji's uh, uh, slide deck, but in my opinion, so, and it's, it's opinion, 
the, the, the supply chain industry for goods is the same as uh, the supply chain for APIs and, and, uh, and, um, and, uh, um, and for data, sorry. So the industry is the, my data on my server, my, the road and the truck driver is my developer uh, through the API. The supermarket where I sell goods is numerical supermarkets, which are mobile platforms, for example, uh, app stores. And at the end, there is still the user. So you might have state humans, uh, even with APIs. So uh, I think sometimes that developers would have, would think about having containers to make it faster, to load and unload data into their applications. So my first point, and that developer, in a, in a developer experience uh, perspective, and because we think that the web goes client side, did you see the presentation with WebRTC? We think this is the way it goes. Tomorrow we'll have a, a panel about it, so, but this is my opinion. It goes on the client side. So, and in a, a developer, um, um, in client side developer's perspective, we think that developers portal are mostly a bug, not a feature, and I will explain why. So on the left, I try to make a comparison, you know, for a car industry, which is completely automated now but uh, with an old style industry, so, and how we completely resolve it, so. But in my opinion, servers are really good. You know, Amazon, Google App Engine, uh, Numergy in France make really, really good uh, 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 technology. We have developer portals, and we have browser which are more and more performant with, uh, and, uh, and app stores and mobile applications that are able to be really performant. So we could think that we are in this step. But in my opinion, we are not in this step. We are still in the old age for developer portals, and I will explain why. So this is how I see developer API integration. So we integrated maybe 150 APIs different, so we experience it a lot of time. But between, between API discovery, API documentation that I have to read, API key registration in your portal, API authorization, so with the OAuth protocol that we've seen with OAuthIO that more than 30 different implementations, some that doesn't respect the standards. So it's still man-made. And with the HTTP and Pony integration, so we are still in the, in, the, in the old age of API integration. So, and in my opinion, the programming cost or time makes this. So deploying a server is easy. Easy, not so easy, but uh, it's easier and doesn't cost a lot of time of money. You can deploy it easy. So, but it's by integrating all the APIs before the portal and after the portal that it takes so much time. So do you, you lose sometimes exactly like the longshoremen lose time when loading and unloading a boat. So, and in, when your uh, uh, application use 10 APIs, 15 APIs, it really goes, it really goes uh, big because they are all different. So. So I say that it's more bug than a feature in a developer experience perspective. But it's really important to have a developer portal for API industry because, um, so yeah, um, I also I, I've bought an iPhone 4S, uh, for, for C, sorry, and, uh, and I regret it. So <laughs> I regret it, you know, because every time I have to type the, the password and with the iPhone 4S, it's just my fingerprint with Touch ID and it works. So in, in, the, in a user perspective, perspective, it's a bug, not a feature. So it, it breaks my, my user experience. But it's really important for Apple and for pro providers to have security. So it's convenience. It's, it's, uh, it's for convenience that it's made. So developer portals are really important because it's a compromise uh, between API providers and developers. API are contracts. And this is why that we have learned. It's not, libra it's not uh, li libraries. So I often say that an API is not only an API programming interface, it's a contract because an API is an API, so I'm good, plus service, then a pricing model, then term of services, marketing, branding, and humans behind APIs that we all are here and why API days are made. So, so it's, it's not, a, maybe it's not a product, it's a journey, but, and it's because of that, we, 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 bar we, we try to, to negotiate with developer experience. So my second point is HTTP calls are alien into the code. So, so some people will not like what I'm doing, what I'm telling. So if they don't say this is uh, in PHP how to, make a, how to make a post request. So kind of really uh, verbose. Uh, I, I will not go uh, under uh, details. 
but this is why you, you maybe know requests, uh, a Python uh, a framework for integrating um, um, a, a HTTP calls or UniREST made by MashApe, so Augusto who will be late but will come after. And you know how many stars they have on GitHub? It's as much as Docker, <laughs> but it's a, uh, and, um, and this, the, the founder of a request uh, was a speaker at APIDs last year, so. But you know how the success of just the, what they do, they just make HTTP request integration easier. So it's just what they, what they do. So for example, we made an example of UniREST for um, the same post uh, in PHP, but so now it's quite, uh, it's quite easy. So unirest.io or request on, uh, on, um, uh, on GitHub. So of course, HTTP is good for interoperability and for the network. We have a network that everybody knows how it works and it's a, it's a communication channel between uh, um, uh, on, on the web, but in my opinion, not for the DX. It's a compromise, it's okay, so. So in, I think if we have a developer experience magic stick, API should be libraries. So you, had, you would have just to download it, put it into your uh, IDE and, uh, and, and that's it. So you would be able to explore it and to have no, uh, uh, no other uh, issue with that. But maybe I'm too kind. So my, my, our vision is what are the potential containers of, of, of APIs uh, now? So we have different ones. We have REST API abstraction, we have objects, we have components and we have uh, Linux containers. So uh, I, I will give my, my, my few clue about it. So the idea with an API abstraction is how to, just an API of APIs, so one single point of access. So you will register one time, you will uh, have the documentation only once, and you will have a complete uh, paradigm behind it. So, but you still have some, some, some bugs into it. But it can be a way to containerize it. But who will be the platform? We try to be the platform for one year and a half. It's quite hard. Um, so the other one, which I believe most, is having, um, having SDK. So SDK act more like uh, libraries. Uh, and, and in my opinion, this is a way for developers to have completely easy integration about API. So we, we think we, we should have a more uh, client, uh, uh, more SDK. So for example, in, on WebShell, we try to be an SDK, JavaScript SDK for the web. So if every, every API had the same paradigm uh, to, 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 integrate, uh, to integrate APIs, but it can be another. So this is, for example, it's a, on the real documentation of AdWords. So we strongly recommend using the client libraries <laughs> instead of using, okay, it's a SOAP API behind that. But, uh, so they say that on top of the portal. So please don't use our API, use our SDK. So, so it's funny. And often for Google Maps, so they made a cool JavaScript API in front of it for you to not see the HTTP calls that you don't want to see, just, uh, just use it. So this is uh, just two examples. So, and I think also not all language have SDK. So how many languages, for example, just let Scala developers or Camel ones, so they never have SDK, so they have to bargain with HTTP calls, and they don't have requests or UniREST, they have other, but it's not so maintained. So their developer experience is really broken. So I don't say that, oh, okay, not all. So what we, what we think, what could would be a container is to have a, a API endpoint, this is all the standards, kind of standard-ish uh, company stand, so to have an API description, so, Whistle, Waddle, Swagger from Warnick, Blueprint from Apiary, Raml from uh, um, Microsoft, and we use at WebShell and OAuth.io, JavaScript wrappers and, and configuration JSON files. So, so, but who will be the standards that will be emerging? I don't know, but, but we think we could generate SDK out of this documentation. Just to have an SDK generator, okay, it will not be fine uh, for everything, but why not, not just do, just make it? So we are working on it now and we will publish some things in, in the next weeks. But this is where we are now. And then with, because of this, we, we, have a, we could have a really good bonus, which is cut complete, an auto completion, which make really exploration and API discovery uh, better, in my opinion. So I think also with the, um, uh, the, the next web of components, we could containerize API into, into widgets and powered by AngularJS, we are making a really push, oh sorry, we are making a big push into, the, in the, into this way. Uh, I think we could really have a kind of 
components directly API related to have to, uh, to embed it really easily uh, about APIs. But this is the way it can be a real, a real container of it. And the last one is Linux container. I, I talked um, with uh, the, the Docker team in, uh, in San Francisco. And they are, I know that they are pushing about how to make uh, um, API integration, maybe not directly from the web, but under the web, uh, on, on TCP directly uh, to, uh, to avoid HTTP, but to have a really strong connection uh, with the provider and to use the container versioning to have uh, the API changes. Because the main issue with objects is that it's local and the network is not local, it's, it's on the other side. So if something change uh, far, so your object is broken and the providers will not say it uh, to you uh, often. So there is something to manage and it seems that uh, they are working on a solution like that, but not over HTTP, so, so let's see how it works. That's it, thank you. And I'm sorry I cannot ask my question to myself. I can, but it's very late. And we have time for one question. A question? Great, thank you very much.